Minecraft. Hot tamale, hot, hot tamale, is perhaps how some of the mobs are going to be feeling after they get hit by my Flame 1, Infinity 1, Power 1 bow in today's episode of Exploration and Tactics. A lot of mobs are going to die, so let's get started. Hello, and welcome back to Minecraft Exploration and Tactics Space Bard, where our goal is to get all of the achievements represented here on this wall. We've managed to get a lot of them with the added constraint that I cannot press the space bar to jump or to swim. There are some fires raging over there. We'll find out more about them pretty soon. But in any case, I've done a bit of work off camera. Let's recap where we are. We've gotten through kind of all of the easy achievements at the beginning. We've got a couple more that are pretty close to being accessible. We've got Overpowered for creating an enchanted golden apple, as well as Sniper Duel, which we might try to get in this episode. But then we'll have things related mostly to the Ender Dragon and the Wither that are going to be difficult. So we're going to try to make some progress uh, towards some of those today. But first off, let me talk about what I've been up to off-camera since the end of the previous episode. We managed to find the stronghold in the previous episode, but I'd also been just doing some exploring around on my various horses using maps. And so since the last time, I think three of these maps were either non-existent or only partially filled out the last time we saw this. And so I've done a bit more exploring on horseback in order to fill out a few more of these maps. And so learned a bit of the way of the the lay of the land around here. I've also done some traveling farther afield. I've been using lots of flints and steels in order to burn down forests to make them easier to travel by horseback. Because, of course, uh, when I'm just going around on my own, it's very hard to get up and down anywhere other than using slabs and stairs and ladders and different things. But when I'm on a horse, and I've got actually a new horse that I will talk about here in just a moment... When I'm on a horse, then I can travel uh, very fast, very freely, uh, and so it's been totally awesome. And so basically what I've done, uh, this is now kind of like facing in the right direction, so the top of this map is actually this way, which is north. And so I, I'm just going to show you a little bit of it right over here. I traveled all the way to the world border out to the west, and just to make things easier to travel by horseback, I burned down all the forests uh, that I was going through along the way, and so you can kind of like see the remnants, the aftermath of that. Uh, I traveled all the way to the west, hoping to find some new exciting biomes. Didn't really find a whole lot. I did find an area with donkeys way out there, but I didn't try to tame any donkeys. And got all the way to the world border. I also traveled further to the north until I encountered some high mountains that were kind of becoming a pain in the neck to pass. And I've done a bit of traveling to the east and to the south as well. Uh, and there's kind of an ocean out there. I'm going to head uh, down to the south to where we first found the horses. But while I do that, I'm going to put up on the screen, in addition to the in-game maps, there's also a tool for Minecraft, an external tool that you can run on your world save called Cartograph G that just shows the portions of the world that you've explored. And so hopefully I've got that up on the screen now. And it basically just shows all of where I explored to the west and to the north and back to the east and south, kind of over near where the stronghold is, that's kind of near where the ocean is. And so that just gives you a sense of the exploration that I've done off camera, but still haven't found jungles or ice spikes or mesas or a number of the exciting biomes that we need to find. And so we're probably going to have to get more achievements to expand the world border, uh, because as you guys probably know, if you've been watching the series before, each time we get three achievements, we double the size of the world border. Currently, it's uh, about 5,000 blocks from end to end. Um, and we have enough achievements that we'll be able to expand that, double that world border size. And number, not, there are a couple of times, hopefully in the not too distant future. In any case, so I am out here on this plains where we originally found horses. The horse that I'm riding now is a 12 heart horse. Previously, I had an 11 heart horse and a 13 heart horse and a 9 heart horse over at my place. While I was exploring somewhere that way, somewhere to the northeast, I found another pack of horses, and I tamed one of them, and it's this guy. He's got 12 hearts, and he's faster than any of the other horses that I've ridden. Uh, and so I went ahead and swapped him out. I left my other tamed horse just out in that field and started riding this guy, and he's my new favorite horse. We might actually put a name tag on him at some point. In any case, it's still kind of the middle of the day. Uh, my plan is we need to get Ender Pearls. And so I'm going to fight Endermen out on the plains here and possibly the desert over there at night. We'll also try to see if we can find any skeletons 
to shoot with our bow from a distance of 50 meters to possibly get the sniper duel achievement. But basically, in order to make progress towards the Ender Dragon, I think I've got like, I don't know, three Ender Pearls to my name right now. And we need, I think, at least eight to unlock the End Portal. There were four kind of of the Ender Eyes already in there. So we're going to need to get more Ender Pearls. And so my plan is tonight, I will fight around at night either on horseback or I'll get off the horse if necessary, uh, try to fight some Endermen to kill to get some more Ender Pearls. And then when daytime comes, I'm going to go back down here. You'll recall there's some caves. We've already lit a fair number of them up and explored. Uh, but I am going to go down into those caves, do some more caving during the daytime, and try to get some more gold so that we can get our way to the Notch Apple achievement. And also, the process of lighting up those caves means then when I do come up here the next night, there'll be even more monsters spawning on the surface, more chances to get Endermen. It's all kind of a virtuous cycle. So that's my plan. Uh, I will see you guys once it reaches the first night, and we'll try to find some Endermen out here. Okay, I think I see a skeleton right here. If I hit him once with this bow to set him on fire, it might make it easier to see him from farther away. And then I wonder if I can hit him again. And I have no idea if this is 50 meters or whatever is the distance you need for Sniper Duel. Okay, apparently that was not far enough. Because we did kill the skeleton from quite a distance, but it wasn't long enough. I don't see any Endermen over here. So I'm going to head back over to the plains. But yeah, I expect we'll do a little bit of back and forth. Just trying to find the correct mobs to spawn. And I guess I could even like measure out the distance of how far away... 50 meters is to get a sense of how far away I'd have to shoot these skeletons. So maybe I'll consider doing that as well. Uh, so for example, this guy. Hey, get off my horse. What are you doing? Oh, crap. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, why is my horse on fire? I don't like this. <laughs> Did I set my own horse on fire? I was trying to hit the... That's what must have happened. Yeah, he took a bunch of damage. I think when I was trying to shoot the um, spider who was right in front of me, I think I accidentally hit my horse with my fire bow here, and so that's no good. I was not aware that you could shoot your own horse while on horseback, but apparently that's the case. I'm not going to test it again. There is a skeleton way off in the distance over there. I have no idea if I'm going to be able to hit him because I'm not that good. Of oh, yes! Sniper duel! We did it! <laughs> I was just about to say because I'm not that good of a marksman. What I meant to say is I'm amazing at this game and with only my second arrow I'll be able to hit a skeleton from more than 50 meters away. So we've already accomplished one of our goals for the day. We got the sniper duel achievement. Uh, our friendly horse should kind of heal himself up over time. And so slowly he'll regenerate health and so he should be okay as long as I don't get him into too much trouble. There's an enderman. Great. Let's see. I think he's going to walk into the water, and then I'm not sure if he'll still be angry at me or what will happen. There he goes. He's having a bad day. He looks like he's trying to find me, maybe. Hey, buddy, where'd you go? There you are. Man, they move so fast. And, all right, he's managing to hit me. I'm not so much managing to hit him. Zombie, you're getting in the way. I really need to get a looting sword. In fact, that's another one of my goals, is actually I should try to kill some more mobs just to gain some experience so that we can try to do a few more level 30 enchants. Um, because I'd really like to get a looting sword, not only for getting ender pearls, but even more importantly, uh, when it comes time... Hello, witch. You're going to be a pain in the neck, so we're going to get rid of you like that. Uh, hey, we got some more glowstone. Amazing. Not only for getting the Ender Pearls, but for getting the Wither Skeleton Skulls. Uh, because eventually we're going to need to fight the Wither, and that is a real pain in the neck to get all those skulls. Uh. Spider Jockey! And a baby zombie. Uh. Alright, very nice. Hey, Enderman, come look at me. Or I'm looking at you, or whatever I'm trying to say. Come to me. Come get angry. Nice. I still find that it's easiest to look at their feet. Someone recently advised me to try looking at the Endermen in the head when fighting. Maybe that was when on horseback to try to get them to teleport away less frequently. Not sure if that really works or not. Uh, I might try it just when standing around as well, if we can find some more Endermen to fight. Ooh, here's an invisible spider. Do you see this? 
Can you just see his red eyes glowing over there? He's invisible. And I can set him on fire, and that makes him a whole lot more visible. Wow, I've only encountered a invisible spider out in the wild, like, one other time, I think. Man, that would have been fun to, like, have a name tag and name him and try to trap him somewhere and have, like, an invisible spider forever. I think, did I see Dedanderzel do that in the Minecraft server? I don't know, that would have been a fun thing to do. But that's only the second time I think I've ever seen an invisible spider out in the wild. The first time was in a previous season of Exploration and Tactics, when I was also out on the desert fighting bad guys, but I was trying to get records by having skeletons shoot creepers, and I encountered one of those invisible spiders. But it seems like practically every episode now, I encounter a spider with a potion effect, and I'm sure some of that is a result of the local difficulty, because I've been in these chunks a whole lot, uh, and so my understanding is the local difficulty knob, when it goes up over time, means that mobs are more likely to spawn with armor, and spiders are more likely to spawn with potion effects. And I think, does that even show up on the F3 screen? Let's take a look at it really quick. Um, local difficulty, yes, 3.61 day 49. I don't know what the maximum value is, uh, but it's obviously already reasonably high. I see an Enderman over there. Uh, can I get over there? I'm pretty sure I can. Because I think there's a little, yeah, place to walk across right over here. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Not so good, probably. Getting hit in the feet, are you? I don't know how that could have happened. Did he drop an Ender Pearl? He did not. How sad. All right. Well, at least we managed to kill one Enderman that night. I am going to head downstairs and try to do some more lighting up some caves down here, hopefully. So I had seen surprisingly few monsters on the open plain where I would parked my horse relative to in the desert and other spots. And so I just decided to dig straight down. I heard a spider. And so I came over here and sure enough, huge cave system branching off in lots of different directions. Uh, and so this explains why there were so few mobs spawning on the surface at night. And it's because there's tons and tons of dark spaces underground for the mobs to be spawning instead. So we're gonna light some of these up. Hopefully, I think we're down deep enough that we might find uh, some good resources, some gold is something that I would especially like to get. Um, but at this point, the combination of me having better armor and weaponry, uh, as well as just all of the practice that I have, here in the Space Bard series of doing caving underground without being able to jump, I feel a whole lot more, I don't know, comfortable. Just kind of running around inside caves and being able to have success lighting things up uh, and being able to navigate despite not being able to jump. Uh, I'm not going to bother getting all the ores right now. For, most, for the most part, I just want to get things lit up. We've only got... Eh, about five minutes before it turns dark on the surface again. I want to get back upstairs. Oops, hello. But, oh, is there a ravine over here too? Holy cow. Hold on, let's take a look at this together. I'm just going to leave you guys off. Oh, it's not a Is it a ravine? Or is it just a big cave system? With water coming in from very high up. I wonder if I can see that from another angle. Water is one of the few things that I'm still extremely scared of because it's very hard for a non-jumping, non-swimming character to move through the water. Maybe I can get around here and see where this is coming from as well. All right, let's take some risks. We've got good armor. Let's take advantage of it. Let's walk over here. I hear a zombie. There he is. Oops, crap. Multiple zombies. I still have not found a single dungeon in this series. And part of that is undoubtedly attributable to the fact that I was so tentative in my original caving in the series. Uh, I'm over that now, obviously. And so hopefully that means we'll be able to cave a whole lot faster, which means cover a whole lot more ground caving. And as a result, if there are any dungeons in any of these areas, I'll be able to locate them. In previous series, I've had lots of luck uh, with dungeons, and so I'm hoping that that will come back. But in any case, I'm going to continue lighting some things up, uh, and this should be really good for the next night when we're trying to find and fight Enderman back on the surface. I've come back upstairs just as it's about to turn nighttime, and it's raining, and so that's a big problem. That means no Enderman tonight. And so I think to get rid of the rain, I'm going to go back home and sleep in a bed, 
Unfortunately, that's also going to get rid of the nighttime, but that means I can do some more caving downstairs. And so I'll see you guys in a bit. It might simply be a lot of zombies, but there's at least the possibility of a spawner somewhere over here. So let's be careful. Especially with the baby zombies that I hear. If you throw them into the mix, that always makes things that much more dangerous. Hello. <laughs> Found you. Oh, and a baby zombie and a chicken. And now the chicken's probably going to get in the way. Oh my goodness. Okay, uh, let's not hit him with my bow. A lot of baby zombies. Wow. I guess maybe they're just the fastest ones to get here. I need to be worried about my back. Um, because it might be the case that guys can still sneak up from behind me over here because I've lit up a bunch of this, but I'm not sure it's entirely well lit. And so let's be careful about that. I don't think it's a spawner anymore. I think it was just there happened to be a few baby zombies around. And since they're so fast and since zombies are so <laughs> telepathically adept, <laughs> I don't know, since one zombie finds you and they all find you, they all just came my way in this whole cave system from wherever they spawned. Yeah, because I don't see any signs of the spawner. It's the usual kind of thing. I've been playing so much bingo that every time I hear a bunch of mobs, I'm like, ooh, maybe it's a spawner. And you know what? In real Minecraft, spawners are not all that common. And so it's probably not. But with time, we'll figure things out. Okay, looks like there's some more darkness up here. I'm going to continue to explore. I'll see you when I see you. Nighttime is falling, and I felt like I lit up a fair amount down there. And so hopefully we'll see a whole lot more mobs spawning on this particular plane at night. I'm currently using, I've got an unbreaking one iron sword, but it's close to breaking. I'm gonna switch to a sharpness sword uh, for tonight, both because it's fresh uh, and because that'll mean fewer hits to kill the Enderman. Yes, definitely getting more mobs spawning here. Those skeletons spawned almost right in front of me. And furthermore, here's an Enderman. I'm gonna go ahead and take care of the skeleton first. So I don't have to worry about him, and then hopefully we'll have better luck with the Enderman. Hey, buddy. Look at me. Or don't look at me. Yeah, just stand there and take it. That's always a good thing. Uh, where'd he go? There he is. Is this the same guy? If he dies in one hit, then it's the same guy. Where'd he go? There he is. Hey, quit stealing my blocks. <laughs> and by my blocks, I mean every block in the world is my block. There he is. Man, okay. I might get off the horse here. Because I think I'll have better luck. There we go. And that was the same guy because he died in one hit. And I'm worried that my horse is going to get hit by some of these arrows. And I think that skeleton might have had an enchanted bow. So let's try to take him out. There we go. Now I'll get back up on the horse. Uh, I did not notice that Enderman did not drop an Ender Pearl. So that's a bummer. But there's definitely more mobs out here in this little plains area than there was on the previous night. And so that's good, but with no Enderman here, I'm going to run over to the desert. Hopefully the mobs on that plane will despawn. We'll get some fresh mobs, such as this Enderman right over here. Hey, buddy. Going to run him through. Great. Get him angry at me. Walk away from the other mobs. And get off the horseback in order to get him in the feet. Oh, baby zombie. All right, baby zombies. Baby zombies. Multiple baby zombies. Glad I have the sharpness sword. Crap. All right, well, the... The Ender Pearl is safe and sound in the hands of that zombie right now. I am not so safe and sound at the moment. I'm not healing. That zombie's on fire, and so if he hits me, I'm going to be on fire, and it's going to be bad news bears. Oh, man. So many babies. Don't see me. All right, you need to go away. I need to eat some food desperately. All right, this is about as close to death under dire circumstances, as I've been so far in this series. Somewhere there's a zombie. Oh, there he is. He hand-delivered the Enderpearl to me. That was very nice of him. Thank you for bringing me my Enderpearl, zombie. I appreciate it. It's the zombie delivery service. How is my horse doing? He could possibly run into a cactus, and so I'm pretty worried about that. So let's go try to track down the horse now. Um, I'm still not doing that well in terms of HP. But... Reunited with a horse. Oh, boy! I feel a whole lot better about my ability to escape the situation. All right, so we managed to pick up one Ender Pearl there. Here's another Enderman. Hey, buddy. Come visit me, please. 
Oh yeah. Alright, where'd he go? I hear him. I'm gonna get off the horse again. When there aren't any other enemies around, I just find it easier to kill the Endermen by swiping at their feet the way that I know how. Alright, and that's probably gonna be the last one tonight. But still, two Ender Pearls in one night is definitely an improvement. And we might get lucky and find one more over here. And so I'll quickly go... Wow, I just saw an arrow go flying over my right shoulder. Uh, when you're traveling this fast, you can almost like keep up with the arrow. It was pretty cool looking. This guy's wearing a lot of chain armor, and I actually wouldn't mind having some chain armor. So if you wouldn't mind dropping some chain armor, sir, I would love to have some of that, please. And he had none of that. He did not want to drop his armor. Fair enough. Fair enough, skeleton. Uh, it appears we're not going to get any more Endermen tonight, uh, but we are still turning quite the profit. Two more Ender Pearls. Whoa! This baby zombie uh, snuck up on me in the oh. daytime. I guess he must have been swimming in the water, and I guess they're still immune to sunlight. The babies are. I was just putting away some, I don't know, bonus loot. Wow, I'm up to level 32. We really definitely need to take a look at some enchanting when we get back home. Uh, but I'm going to do one more set of lighting up in these caves, and one more night, and then we'll see where we stand. Look at this! There are no light sources here. Or is there lava over here? I mean, I hear that there's lava nearby. But let me even go ahead and take out... This is a weird lighting glitch. If I take out this torch... Okay, I've removed some of the torches, because this is persistent. Uh, I think it's a lighting glitch. Because you come down here, and all of a sudden it gets very bright. Especially right over here by this diorite. Uh, but there's no exposed lava or anything that would be giving off light down here. This area should be dark. I wonder if I exit the world and reload, if anything will change? Let's actually try that. Alright, I've reloaded the world. And it's still the same. Dark, dark, dark. And then all of a sudden it gets light right around here. Um, I need to mine some of this gold anyway. But I'm really curious to see if we uncover some lava. If that will explain the lighting. Like, it seems like it's even getting brighter over here. Doesn't it? It seems like super bright right here. That is so crazy. All right, if I press uh, F3, the light says 14 right here, 11. There was a zero. There's a zero lighting right... Oh, it's because I'm standing on the half slab, maybe? But then 14, zero sky, 14 block. Light level 13 here. Light level 11 here. It says zero each time I'm standing on the slabs. There's definitely some kind of weird lighting glitch going on here. And if I go up here... Yeah, light level 3, 2. That's what we expect. Um, just in case you can't see it, the light level is right where my mouse cursor is, which I think is recording. Um, yeah, that is so weird. But there's nothing actually giving off the light. And furthermore, when I get on a half slab, it goes back down to zero. I'm curious if I just had, you know, normal torch light over here. And now over here, light level 12, 13, if I stand on a half slab here, it also goes down to zero. So apparently, well... Yeah, I don't understand how lighting works in this game. I don't know that the developers of Minecraft ever really understood how lighting worked. Uh, and so lighting has always been weird in this game. But that is just a crazy persistent lighting bug, the likes of which I have never seen before. Another spider jockey. They seem to be really popular. Spider down. Ouch. Here's an Enderman in a gettable spot. Let's go ahead and take care of the Skelly first. There we go. And now you. I've had so many skeletons drop unenchanted bows on me while playing today. Here's another one. All right, one more Enderman. Let's see if I can get this guy. Hey, buddy. Where are you going? Nowhere, that's right. Nice. Terrific. Don't need an egg. We'll take the Ender Pearl. Great. 
All right, we are going to go home. We are going to see how much gold we have and how many ender pearls we have and see what kind of shape we're in to continue forward on this crazy let's play. So it turns out I had some ender pearls in the ender chest and in another chest. And so when I consolidate them all, I've got eight ender pearls. And so we're in great shape there. And I've got a bunch more gold that I can cook up. There's 31 here and there is 45. That'll be 70. Yes, that'll be enough that we can make the enchanted golden apple. And so I think let's go ahead and do that today then, uh, because that'll be great. And I'll go ahead and use a lava bucket as fuel to cook up a bunch of iron over here. Uh, but let me get the enchanted golden apple together. And so I believe I've done the math right, that 9 times 8 is 72, which means that I should be able to go like this and make 8 gold blocks. And then with an apple that I just grabbed out of my food chest, we can go and make... Da -da 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 golden apple enchanted achievement get overpowered awesome great and so now would be a good time for us to go visit the monument with the two achievements that we managed to get in today's episode we got sniper duel from killing that skeleton from 50 meters away and we got overpowered by creating the enchanted golden apple pretty awesome and that means we're going to be able to expand the world border once again I always like to check it out on the achievement screen. So let's see, where are these crazy things? Sniper duel, kill a skeleton with an arrow from more than 50 meters. Taken. Awesome. And overpowered, build a notch apple. Taken. And so we will cross those guys off of the list. Is this uh, bow rotated somehow? Maybe that's the correct location. Is that how a bow looks? Yeah, I guess that's what a bow looks like. I don't know what I'm thinking here. All right, so we've got two more achievements. As a result, we've got this entire column of three, which means, once again, we will expand the world border. And just like that, it is expanded from 5120 to 10240. 512 to 1024 times 10. And so now I have a whole lot more than I can explore and perhaps be able to find some new biomes. And if we go back to the nether and get some blaze rods, next time we could potentially open a portal into the end. Not quite sure that I'm ready for the dragon just yet, uh, but we're definitely getting closer. And so we've got a whole lot to look forward to. And one other thing to look forward to, I had a book out because I was looking at enchantments since I'm at level 33 and an iron sword I could get looting three. I don't have enough diamonds to make a diamond sword. And so I think if I had a diamond sword, I would get the same enchantment, looting three. And so I'm tempted to see if I can go find one more diamond so that we could get a diamond sword with looting three. But in any case, that would be super valuable for the long term for getting wither skulls. Uh, so hopefully maybe I'll be able to do that. In any case, uh, this is where I'm going to go ahead and call things for today. I hope as always that you guys are having a great day and I will see you again in the next one for more Minecraft Exploration and Tactics Space Bard. We are just rocking it, plowing through these achievements, but these last six, or I guess the last seven, are going to be the difficult ones. So look forward to that. Hope you guys are having a great day. Bye-bye.